Welcome to Future Proof, the program that uh, addresses business issues and the future for students, employees and business owners and the value of emotional intelligence. And I, I like to invite guests onto the show who can really bring some wisdom uh, to thinking about the future and what that looks like for you. And I'm delighted that today I have the guest of Tim Lawton, MP. Hello Tim, welcome Hi, to the programme. Um, we've worked together before actually, haven't we? We have, many years ago, mostly around schools and teaching kids how to be more resilient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you came and it was um, uh, Shoreham College Business Forum and you spoke yep. about um, goodies in hoodies and it was when you were the Minister of Education. Can I ask you, what, why goodies in hoodies? What? That, that was quite a few years ago now. It went back to the time, I think, if you remember where um, David Cameron gave that speech, and I think it was dubbed goodies in hoodies, and it was all about the really negative um, perceptions and media coverage of young people, mm. as if you know anybody a hoodie is about to monkey or whatever, yeah. whereas young people are the generation most likely to uh, volunteer, most likely to be patriotic and do lots of good stuff, but you never read about that in the papers because it doesn't make for good, uh, good coverage. So um, this was all about how we need to improve our perception of young people because they are the future and they are the most exciting generation and the most global generation and the generation most able to connect with more people than any generation mm. uh, ever ever before. So let's stop having a downer on them and just be positive about yeah. them. Yeah, and, and it, it's uh, around unconscious bias, isn't it? Or yeah. they make assumptions because of how somebody looks, sounds, or, or where they live, or, or anything else. Okay, so can you give us an update? Um, and I always ask everybody this, but it's, it's interesting me asking you, who are you and what do you do? Okay, well I'm Tim Lawton, I am the MP for East Worthing and Shoreham in Sussex and I've been here for, this is my 22nd um, year as, uh, as MP, which some people might say is rather too long. Um, in my time I've been Shadow Minister for Children, I was Minister for Children and Children and Young People is my big thing around mental health as, as well. I chair a, a charity around perinatal mental health, I chair the Parliamentary Party uh, Children's Group and the Thousand One Critical Days Group, which is all about better attachment between kids and parents to make sure we make that real difference early on in a child's life. Mm. Um, it's great work, and, and it's one of the reasons I wanted to have you here. It, it's you know, yes, the political links are always interesting because it is a place of influence, but also sure. I know your passion um, for um, adults and ed for education. But you also uh, run something um, around mindfulness, don't you? Yes, one of the other things I got involved with, uh, really by accident, was mindfulness. And we set up uh, an all-party group for mindfulness mm. uh, in Parliament because it was becoming a bit of a bit of a thing and mental health, the profile of mental illness has risen hugely, particularly amongst um, young people. And mindfulness is one of those things, I liken it to sort of jogging back in the 1970s, which was a bit of a sort of strange new fad, but now everybody does it and going to the gym is, you know, why wouldn't you want to look after your body? But this is equivalent for the mind as well. And mindfulness is, uh, is an antidote to sort of low-level mental illness, depression or whatever, that anybody can do anytime, any place, uh, any, anywhere. And it's really taking off. And if we're going to put our money where our mouth is, then Parliament needs to do it as well. So we have weekly mindfulness classes in Parliament. Now, I think 245 at the last count, MPs, wow and members of the House of Lords have been through a mindfulness um, course. And I think there has been a marked difference in people's attitude in the, uh, in the chamber, sort of calm people down a bit. I think the, the way people interact with other people from other parties uh, has, in, has improved. But with all the, the chaos that's been going on through Brexit, no one uh, mentioned it recently, the mental health of MPs has taken one hell of a knock as, uh, as well as you would uh, expect. I'm sure a lot of people have no sympathy for us. But having MPs in high pressure um, jobs with all the problems going on at the, the moment, having all those mental illness challenges as well is not a good place to, to be. And so mindfulness is just one way that you can sort of step aside from the hurly-burly and the chaos of everything going on uh, around you, live in the, in the present, take time out, order your thoughts, 
and and be more productive and um, and more sociable and and a better person with it. And, and it's and it's being applied in schools, in prisons, yeah. in businesses, and it's a win-win situation. Yeah. And I want to go back to a comment you made just now about you know, whilst uh, some people may not have sympathy, you know, that is fundamentally wrong. It's mm. like looking at somebody homeless on the street and saying, well, it's your own fault, you're there, I've got no, yeah. you know, it, it, it is, you know, unconscious bias, it is discrimination to feel that the mental health of an MP is no less important, no more important than that of somebody on the street sure. or a, a mother with postnatal depression or anything else. And, and, and mindfulness is very um, central, I think, in many ways to emotionally intelligent thinking. Can I ask you, what does emotional intelligence mean to you? I, I think emotional intelligence is just trying to, I think resilience is a big part um, of it and putting things in perspective. And the trouble is these days, uh, we, we live in the, uh, in the moment, all the pressures of peer pressure for young people, of social media, which has been a huge influence, and that is an invention of the last 20 years. You know, yeah. when I was at school, nobody had heard of emails, the internet, and, uh, and, all, and all of that. But yeah. kids today have to cope with that sort of thing. And you need to be able to have coping mechanisms, and we need to be teaching kids not just how you use social media, how um, you get qualifications and, and skill, but actually how you can have defences against the downsides of social media, of which there are many, and how you get the, um, the best um, out of it. So we need to have young people who are better skilled, communicating better, socialising um, better, interacting better, engage better, but are resilient and can handle all those huge pressures which we never had to uh, face all those years ago. And emotional intelligence is about having those skills to be able to know what is important and what's not important and keep it in context and perspective. Definitely, and I'm linking it too to your conversation about the mindfulness in Parliament and people... Um, and to me what comes to mind is a word that I use a lot is suspension and the ability mm -hmm. to suspend and part of emotional intelligence is emotions and controlling them and, and emotions is energy in motion mm -hmm. and too often people have a knee-jerk reaction um, they don't suspend which then helps them have a more balanced view maybe of what is going on and like you say, social media and all the rest of it, everything is immediate. You know, you and I, when we wrote letters, you know, yeah. um, when you first left school in business or what have you, you yeah. had what they call it snail mail now, you know, you'd yeah. post it and you'd, and people would have time to digest whatever was going on and we don't have that now. And that's why I think mindfulness is so important. Resilience. Um, how do you display resilience then? I, I agree it's a, an attribute we should all have and we've nearly just got to, just over a minute. How have you used resilience as a tool yourself? Uh, I think you just need to remember that there's always something more serious, worse going on in the world than what has just happened to you. And is it absolutely necessary to be attached to the outside world for 24 hours uh, a day? Do you absolutely have to see every piece of social media, every email that, uh, that comes in within minutes of it uh, coming in? Why? are all those things so important that you can't actually just put down your your phone and consider something, take a step back, and then if it's important, give an appropriate considered uh, response uh, uh, to it. And I'm afraid at the moment, it's a 24 hour existence, you have to respond to everything straight away. Why? You know, people who take their phones to bed with them. Yeah, I know. For goodness sake, I, the one thing I never do, I leave my phone on charge in my study, never yeah. goes near. Uh, the bedroom or even the bathroom or, or whatever. Let's get things into perspective. So I think what you've basically said there is the resilience is actually the discipline around the invasion, which is what it is, mm. of social media. And it's a disciplined mind. And also, um, and we're going to carry on after the break if that's okay, but you talked about mindfulness and the importance of that, which is being in the moment, it's about noticing, yes. and it's being about aware of literally your breath, so second by second what's going on. You cannot not do that it is impossible to do that if there's a bleeping phone or you know Absolutely. a text or whatever it invades that freedom um, that calmness that we all need um, thank you Tim do stay with me we're <laughs> going to pick up again afterwards and ask about uh, artificial intelligence and its place right. in Parliament maybe <laughs> uh, enjoy the break and do come back in just a moment thank you
EQ, Emotional Quotient, is better known as Emotional Intelligence. It is a tangible tool that can sit alongside your services or your product, and it can be taught. Leaders with high EQ have less stress, they're more effective, and they earn more money. There's a great saying, just because we have pains, it does not give us permission to be a pain. <laughs> I believe that teaching emotional intelligence has a direct impact on your sense of success and your net profits. EQ will empower you and your workforce to drive the change that you want. Change brings transition. EQ can help unpack what's holding you back and speed up that period of transition.